This is section 9.4, Exponential Growth and Decay, and our first objective is to solve differential equations that satisfy the law of exponential change given initial conditions. By the time we're done, I'd like you to be able to explain why we can replace plus or minus e raised to the c1 power with a c sub 2 when we solve differential equations satisfying the law of exponential change. Before we get to the objective, let's connect to our old knowledge. In earlier chapters, we learned how to interpret the word proportional in a mathematical statement. So if y is proportional to x, then we would write y equals k times x. We also learned how to solve differential equations using separation of variables. So let's now consider the differential equation that arises from the statement, the rate of change in a quantity y is proportional to the amount currently present. Remember that the rate of change is a synonym for a derivative with respect to time. That means we can write an equivalent mathematics statement that looks like this, dy dt equals k times y. If we now solve this using the separation of variables technique we had from the last section, assuming that we know how much was initially present and that y of 0 equals y sub 0, we can see that the solution ends up working out this way. I start with dy dt equals ky. I then separate the variables by moving the y underneath the dy and leaving the k over with the dt. Now if I integrate both sides, I will get the log natural of the absolute value of y equals kt plus some random constant. Now remember I'm at the crossroads. I can either completely isolate y first and then plug in the point or I can plug in the point and then isolate y. Because my antiderivative involves a log, I will have fewer issues if I isolate the y first. So let's recall that the first thing I would do to isolate that y is I would move the log natural by making both sides exponents of e. That would give me e raised to the kt plus c sub 1. Now if I want to get y out of the absolute value, we recall that the inside of that absolute value could either be plus or minus e to the kt plus c sub 1. Now y is by itself, but this still looks pretty messy. So what we're going to do is we're going to use properties of exponents to rewrite this as an e to the c sub 1 times an e to the kt. Now notice that we have yet to plug in our initial condition. So this right here is still a random constant. We haven't figured out what it is. So because it's a random constant, we can rewrite it a little more simply and call it c sub 2. Now we are ready to plug in our point, which is when t is 0, we get an output of y sub 0. When I do that, I'll get a y sub 0 equals c sub 2 times e to the 0. In other words, that c sub 2 will equal y sub 0. Go back and write the solution. We get y equals y sub 0 e to the kt. This pattern is formalized in what's called the law of exponential change. So the law of exponential change says that if the rate at which a quantity y changes is proportional to the amount currently present and that initial amount is y sub 0, then we can write the amount for all time will be that initial amount times e to the kt. And the beauty of this law of exponential change means that we no longer have to separate the variables, integrate both sides, add c, plug in the point. We can recognize it as one of these types and simply jump to the solution. So with example one, if I want to find the solution to this differential equation, we recognize that it satisfies the law of exponential change, so we already know that y will be y initial e to the kt. Then we use our points in order to figure out what y initial and k actually are. Because y of 0 is 60, we know that that y initial is 60. And then we can plug in the second point, which is 1030, and use it to figure out what k is. So we know a 30 came out when t was 10. So if I isolate k now, I will get 1 half equals e to the k times 10. If I log both sides, 
I will get k times 10 on the right, so k is now 1 tenth the log natural of a half. That leads me to my final solution, which is y equals 60 e to that k times t. And I would recommend that you put the t out in front as opposed to at the back so that you don't inadvertently think that the t is inside the log natural. With our second example, it's a little more tricky. We again have that law of exponential change, so we know the solutions will be of this form. But this time we didn't get y of 0, so we're actually going to have a system of equations. We know that we get a 30 when we plug a 10 in. And we know that we get a 60 when we plug a 20 in. So now we need to solve the system. That means we either isolate k and plug it in here, or we isolate y initial and plug it in. And personally, I think isolating y initial is going to be simpler. So that would be 30 over e to the 10k. If I now plug that in down here and do my substitution method, I will get 60 equals 30 over e to the 10k times an e to the 20k. If I combine my exponentials and make a single exponential out of it, I'll get 60 equals 30 times e to the, remember that when you have division of exponentials and the bases match, you will subtract their exponents. So that'd be a 20k minus a 10k gives me 10k. Divide by 30, take the log of both sides, and then divide by 10. Now that we have the k, we can plug it in up here and figure out that y initial is going to be 30 divided by e to the 10 times that 1 tenth ln of 2. The tens cancel. I get e to the log natural of 2, which is the same as 2, which will give me 15. Now that I have my y initial and I have my k, I'm ready to write my solution, which is y equals my y initial times e to the k times t. And again, put that t out in front so that you don't inadvertently think that it belongs inside the log.